All right, high rollers, I build it on Twitter as the interview the darts world has been waiting for. I know I have a mover and shaker on Twitter. He's got quite the following, probably one of the best darts collections around, souvenirs, memorabilia, dart shirts, the like, and he's already strutted his stuff on the Alley Pally stage, and he's only 10. From what I can see on social media, this is a family affair, and it's much bigger than the game of darts. Harvey Stringer is our guest today. His mom, Claire, is with us as well. Harvey, Claire, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being our high rollers today. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. Anytime. Yeah, anytime. It's great to have you. Really appreciate this. Claire, let's start with you. You run Harvey's Twitter account. Great follow, by the way, at Harv180. In his bio, it reads, I am a darts enthusiast with autism, and his pin tweet goes even further saying, he was diagnosed in November 2017, he's been playing darts since the age of three, and it includes this quote, autism can't define me, I define autism. Can you give us some background on Harvey's story, your family story? Yes. So, um, yeah, so from the age of three, um, we love darts from the start, from from a young age myself. And then my husband and I would always watch the darts, have it on the television, and then from the age of three, Harvey started actually picking up um, my hair clips and would use them as darts. <laughs> yeah, he would just throw them at the floor at absolutely nothing. And as time went on, he was sort of getting a bit more interested. He was mimicking the dart players as well. Um, so we actually found him a dart board in the charity shop, and we got him some tiny little darts. And he would then start throwing the darts at the dartboard. We didn't lean it up against the wall. Um, and he would then just start throwing darts, mimicking the players, making up scores. And as he got a little bit older, we got him uh, a gorilla stand and a, a new board, uh, attached the board to that. And then he had the dartboard at eye level to start with. And he was doing great with that. And then from the age of six, um, he started attending Sudbury Youth Darts Academy, and then he was throwing darts from the correct distance and height, and we've just basically gone from there. And then obviously in, in, through all of that, he had the, the autism diagnosis, which we got in total, it was about 18 months from first referral to diagnosis. But he coped so well with it, and darts is his sort of um, get away from it all. Um, he just loves it, absolutely loves it. Well, it's a great game, and it really seems to me that on Twitter there's a great following, a great darts community, a great autism community as well. I know Harvey's friend yeah. Charlie Gray's always tweeting, pretty good player, a left-hander. Katie Boots, a young girl with autism, draws pictures of famous darts players. I think she's even drawn one of Harvey. I mean, there's great support in the darts world for autism, right? Absolutely. Um, it's good to spread the awareness as well that just because you have autism doesn't mean that it needs to stop you from doing what you truly love. And, and Charlie, he's such a good friend to us and to Harvey. We always make sure whenever we go to a darts event, Charlie and Harvey have a picture together uh, wherever we are. Um, tomorrow, actually, we should have been at a, an exhibition. We were all going together, um, but sadly, obviously, it's been cancelled due to the coronavirus. But Never mind. But yeah, we're just enjoying darts at home at the moment. And he plays online against people. He's had a game against Luke Humphreys. And he's had a game um, against Gezi on Instagram. So that was really good fun. Now, <laughs> now, really enjoyed it. now admittedly, I, I don't know much about autism, but it does seem to me that darts in particular seems to be a great game for young people with autism. And I'm wondering why you think that might be. To be honest, I don't actually know. I think it might have something to do with the concentration, just something to focus on, because um, Harvey likes to have something to focus on. He likes routine. So it, it's a routine of throwing a dart, counting up, adding up what he's got, and then also, obviously, um, checking downwards as well. So whatever score he gets, he can then take away that score to know what he needs as well. It's a good focus for him when he's on it. Well, I've heard nothing but good things about Harvey and his fine play. Harvey, you've been playing darts most of your life. Why do you like the game so much? Just have a bit of fun in the games. Just concentrate if you want to play like professionals, like one day when you get older. It's fun. And is that your goal? Is that what you want to be, Harvey, a professional darts player? Yeah. <laughs> 
that's yeah, a great. Like I mean, that's a great goal. And if you get good enough, I mean, it's quite a living. I mean, these players are making a lot of money these days. Yep, they are. <laughs> now I know you're a big fan of Gerwin Price. Why do you like Gezi so much? Why do you like him? Just because that uh, he he's kind of intelligent. He's a nice he's a nice person to me. He. He, he, he signed with me. He signed my shirt when I went to Ali Pali for like, for like, was it nineteenth? Nineteenth of December last yeah, year. Yeah, nineteenth of December last year. That's why I just like him. We got to talk to him after his game when he won against William O'Connor three two. Had a good time. Nice good time there. Yeah. So yeah. he's he's a nice guy, is he? He was nice to you. Yes. I'll tell you what, I'm a big fan of Gezi too. I've never met him, but I like it when he plays, especially when he hits those 180s or those big out shots and lets out those big roars, the screams. I find it very exciting. He's exciting to watch. Yeah. He is. You do the same as well, don't you? Yeah. When you hit a big score, you <laughs> he does the Gezi roar, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> 180. He likes to give it some, does he? <laughs> yeah, he does, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'll hear him... Um, because our doc, doc was in the kitchen, and like I'm in the living room, and um, all of a sudden I'll hear, go on, and I know then, he's like, <laughs> mum, I've just done this, or mum, I've just done this, and he loves it, and he's so proud, and, and we, we've got into the habit now, because we're keeping track of his scores um, of, of 180s this year, I'm gutted that I didn't start doing it from the very first one, but we, we keep a track of his 180s for um, a page on Facebook that he's part of. Um, so he's, yeah, he's had 32 180s so far this year. Wow. So, yeah, we're, and I take pictures of them. The first one he hit was the first, of, um, it was August 2018 was the first one he hit. So, but they're, they're becoming a bit more frequent now. <laughs> well, what was that like, Harvey, when you hit your first 180? That must have been great. Really great. Really, really great. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I've hit, I've hit a good score. <laughs> I've never hit one, so I don't know what that's. <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question because we mentioned Charlie Gray, your good buddy. He he sent in a question. Yeah. He wanted to know how many one eighties you've hit and what is your greatest darts moment. I, I imagine going to the Alley Pally. Yeah, that is correct. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you, so how many one eighties have you hit this year? What yeah, thirty two one eighties. This year. Mum said my goal was like 35 or something. I think it, it was 50, I think, to start 50. with for the year, but I think we're going to go past 50 <laughs> this year. Mum said to me once when I was like at a school or something, Mum said, see if you can get 25 on it, right, and I did that, no problem, and now she's giving it me um, giving me a more harder task to do 50. <laughs> and... I think we'll go past 50 180s, yeah. though, don't you? <laughs> well, I, I think that's important. I think your mum is right. You've got to aim high and set yourself some big yeah. goals. you got to keep practicing, too. Are you putting in lots of practice? Yeah. Yeah. Haven't had much of a game um, earlier. Played dad, lost 3-0. Didn't have much of a practice. I only had nine practice starts. Uh... It helps when he has a game that yeah. he practices beforehand. Because <laughs> otherwise... Um, yeah, he, he gets a bit, um, oh, no, I'm, I'm losing. I haven't had practice, but yeah. he's fine. Once he's been on the board a good five or ten minutes, he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems like Dad's a pretty good player. How about you, Mom? You, you play darts as well? No. Um, <laughs> I play badly. I feel I, I will play sometimes with Harvey, but I personally feel that because I'm not good enough, it drags him down. So he, he plays better when he's playing against people that are really good. So it, it brings out the better side of darts. He tries harder when someone is playing better against him. Well, I'll tell you what. I think so, your son's quite intelligent because I think that is the optimal practice strategy right there. Always try to play someone better because it gives yourself yeah. some pressure and you get used to it. Yeah. And then you start beating these people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes he can get a bit um, despondent sometimes if he's not hitting great scores. But at the end of the day, you know, we say to him, you're only 10. And for what you're achieving at your age now is amazing. So, 
you know, we try not to let him worry too much about what he's hitting or, you know, what scores he's hitting. You know, he doesn't have to be a 180 machine, you know. He doesn't have to be hitting massive scores, you know. He doesn't even have to win because win or lose, it doesn't matter to us. He's 10, you know. So everything will come with age. You know, he's got so many years ahead of him in the game if he decides to carry on. You know, he's got years to perfect it. So we just let him play for now and, and, and carry on. Absolutely, and I think Harvey said it. Just have fun. It's a great game. It's very exciting. Yeah. It's fun to play, too. Now, we mentioned Gerwin Price. I, I'm a big fan. I like this guy. And I just watched a video. I'm pretty envious of you, Harvey. You were playing Gerwin Price on, on a live stream, or at least on the computer. He hit a 180, and you followed with a 140. Do you not get nervous when you play guys like that? Yeah. No, not particularly. And um, when Mum was talking just now, like speaking of one eighties, I went to this pub and I and I got to the finals. I lost four two, but the semi finals that was absolutely fantastic. Like it was. You hit one eighty in that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, one eighty, one forty, hundred. Mm -hmm. Didn't miss a double. Yeah, that's right. So. <laughs> and how's your counting? Right. How's your counting, Harvey? Your checkouts. Do you know all the combinations? Are you working on that? Kind of. I just sometimes try and get over 50 180s. I just sometimes do like 180s and sometimes doubles. And his, his counting for his age is phenomenal. He knows exactly. He can work out in his head what he needs to go for without even thinking about it. So now, I mean, checkouts to him now are just it's easy. He doesn't need to think about it. Um, he can add up what he's got very quickly and take it off the score. Um, he, he's very good, and checkout wise, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to look or take time to work it out. If he hits something, he knows what he's got left, and he knows what he needs to go for. It's it, remarkable. It's interesting because <laughs> counting is so important in this game, and I think he mentioned uh, Gerwin Price and Willie O'Connor. I think in that match, if I'm not mistaken, that Willie O'Connor went for the wrong double, and Gerwin won. Is that the right match? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Is that right, Harvey? I've watched it quite a couple of times on YouTube where it got a terrible miscount. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, for, yeah, I'm getting from Harvey that was correct. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harvey has confirmed. He said, yes, I have watched that several times on YouTube. <laughs> uh, okay, so Gerwin Price, Harvey likes him, and I know Claire from your tweets at ClaireDaz99 that you're a big supporter of MVG and you know, there's a lot to like about Michael Van Gerwen, isn't there? Uh, what's it like in the household when those two collide? You must have bragging rights over Harvey and tease him a tad because because <laughs> Mighty Mike's always winning. Yeah, I, you know, I dread it whenever MBG comes up against Gezi because we like them both. I like Gezi as well. Um, and, you know, we, we've met both of them, both equally as lovely as each other. Um, but it's so hard in the household. I have to just say to myself, do you know what? I don't mind who wins this one because I like them both. I'll be happy for both of them or for whoever wins. Um, so that, that's the way I sort of, that's the way I go down. You know, Harvey's obviously very like, yeah. But then he likes, he likes MVG as well. I hear Harvey practicing in the background. That's great. I want to I want to talk about this trip to the Alley Pally, the VIP hospitality suite last year, the World Championship. Yeah. That must have been so awesome. What a thrill. Tell me about some of the players you met. Uh, I know Wayne Martle is a, a fan of yours. You're a fan of his. I mean, these are terrific experiences, and you even got to go in the broadcast booth. Oh, do you know what? It was, inc it was incredible. I mean, Harvey, Harvey, do you want to... That's it. It was incredible. The tweet that I had, that I saw from uh, Matthew Porter, who's the chief executive of the PDC. We were, we were actually just having a few games of darts that evening. I hadn't even looked at my phone. And then, of course, when I went to look at my phone, I saw that he had retweeted some photos that I'd put on Harvey's Twitter about his uh, collection and his bedroom. And to see that tweet, to, to, uh, you know, to say that he noticed that there was no 180 sign from the, the World Championships and would Harvey like to, to go as a guest you know, that was absolutely incredible. I mean, Harvey was buzzing. You know, it was, that's the best thing that he's ever had happen to him. And he was treated like royalty, weren't you? Because we went a it couple... Was awesome. went, it was awesome. And um, you got to go in the commentary booth with Wayne, didn't you, and Stuart Pike? 
Did you enjoy that? Yeah, really enjoyed it. And they were like, the so it was like pop, pop, pipe. <laughs> yeah. and, and then we was like, oh, I should have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the broadcast booth, because I'm curious, do they actually have a great view of the playing area, the stage? Yeah, quite a bit. Um, mm, yeah. Not, not really. I mean, they sat. I think what I think what sort of happens is because the the commentary booth was quite away to the back from the stage, but they obviously have screens and everything. So yeah, the the commentary box wasn't close like it was at the Premier League last year because he actually got to do that um, last year as well. Well, well, speaking of Wayne Martel, he recently won the uh, Walk-On World Cup, and I know you guys were quite happy about that. Harvey, you got yeah. to do a walk-on at the Alley Pally. You got to play on stage. What yeah. was that like? That must have been a huge thrill. Yeah. Also felt nerve-wracked as well. Well, I can imagine. <laughs> you get up there, the stage must be so massive. Yeah. Like two times the size of our floor in the kitchen. Probably bigger than that. Yeah, like five times, man. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a few people watching, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. I must break all the fake 180 <laughs> <laughs> when I didn't actually hit one. Everyone was like, yeah! <laughs> and they put the signs out. That's great. That must have been a fantastic Christmas for the family, Claire. Yeah. Oh, it was it was brilliant. And of course, you know, we went on the 19th of December and then we went back again um, on the 21st. And we went all day this time. So we were there for afternoon and evening sessions. It was brilliant. We just had such a good time and it was such a good experience for Harvey um, to see, you know, see up close and to see the walk-ons up close and to see other dart players. I've got a, a wonderful picture of, of Harvey and, and Daryl Gurney. It's just one of my favourites. And then, of course, there was Simon Whitlock as well. And, of course, Gezi. So, yeah, and then he got to see Wayne. Wayne came down to see him and obviously went yeah. to the commentary booth and... Paul Nicholson came to find you as well, didn't he? And Colin Lloyd, he yeah. brought you some darts of his. Yeah. And Well, yeah, you saw Russ yeah. as well, didn't you? Right. But he didn't come. No, you saw him on the stage, didn't you? So, yeah, he, there, was, there was a lot of people that, that saw him those days. Now, I saw a picture I saw a picture of a Steve West walk-on where he was giving Harvey the high five. Was that at the Worlds? It was, yeah, and we'd never seen that photo before. Harvey just happened to um, put into Google Steve West walk-ons, and he came and said, Mum, look at this photo, and that's, I've never seen that photo before, so it was really, really nice to see that. It feels like FaceTime, um, I would have shown you the picture of it, like, maybe Google. I think Derek's me. seen it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen the picture. I've got the picture, pal. I'm ready to put it in the video. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you've also been to the Premier League, is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, we've been um, been a few a few times. If, if we've the, been. If the Premier League was still going, who would you say was top of the table? We know who's top of the table at the moment. <laughs> if it was still going, I'd have to say Glenn Durrant. <laughs> yeah, Glenn Durrant is the top, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, my husband and I went to the Premier League the first time round in 2013 on our own. Yeah. Um, you were. And then we took Harvey, actually, the first time, probably three years ago now, I think it was, two or three years ago, um, and we went to London to the, the finals. And then we went again last year, and we went to Birmingham and then London. And, and that was brilliant. The Birmingham, uh, going to Birmingham was incredible because we never expected... Um, it to happen, you know, to, to go, you know, go on stage and everything. Um, I tweeted Rod Studd, who's another commentator on Sky Sports, and I just tweeted him and said, you know, is, would it be possible to say hello, you know, maybe have a photo or whatever beforehand? And he said, like, yeah, absolutely, no problem. So, you know, when we got there, I sort of tweeted him and said, you know, we're here, etc. And um, he said, you know, come to the walk-on area. Long story short, security wouldn't let us in because we were upstairs and we didn't have wristbands downstairs. So he just basically messaged me and said, right, what's your number? 
sent him my number. He then called me and he literally appeared within seconds and um, cleared it with security and literally took us right down to the bottom um, to the stage. Harvey went and sat in the, the commentary box and he's got the microphone up, you know, took a photo of him, the microphone up to his, to his mouth. Um, he then saw Dave Clark. I mean, he was just, oh, he's lovely. Such an inspiration, such a lovely, lovely, lovely man. And um, he said, oh, you know, do you want to go up on the stage? And we were like, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Dave walked up. We followed him on and... Wayne then came out, so there was Wayne and Rod and Dave all on the stage and we're taking photos and, oh, it was just incredible. We just never expected that to happen. I mean, that was another amazing evening and massive thanks to Rod Studd who um, arranged that because he's just lovely, such a lovely, lovely guy. There's so many lovely people in the world of, of darts. I can't even describe it. <laughs> I mean, I even see the picture there. He's He's got a picture with the world number one, MVG, a great ambassador. I mean, I really think it's amazing, Claire, what you're doing. Uh, I think it's amazing what the dart players have done for you guys and what the executives as well. Seems like there's great support in the darts community for autism, and I just hope it continues. Harvey, keep practicing because I want to see you on that big stage as a professional. Thank you. I'm already practicing right now. Um he is. He's a 180 <laughs> machine, folks. He's, he's, he's trying to hit a 180, I think, while I'm on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> uh, you got to love it. I really appreciate your time. At Harv180 on Twitter, a great follow. You got to check him out. At Harv180, Harvey Stringer, our guest today, is Mum Claire. At Claire Daz 99 on Twitter. Not a bad follow herself. And I want to thank you both so much. Let's hope the lockdown ends soon and we can get back to the action. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you for talking. It's been really good, hasn't it, Harvey? Before you go, like and subscribe to High Roller Radio. <laughs> oh, my. That's the perfect ending. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. He knows his branding, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Big up the high roller radio. <laughs>